Hello and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Today's video is a pocket page or a spread of pocket pages uh, that cover middle the middle of March for me. So it's uh, basically spans the past week and a half or so. I do have uh, a process video that should be posted pretty soon that covers early, late February and early March. So check out my channel if you missed that. They might be posted in reverse order depending on how I do this. But as you can see, what I'm starting with is just familiarizing myself with the supplies that I have. I have all of my photos already printed out at sizes ranging from 4x6 to 3x4 to 2x3 um, and some screen captures and those sorts of things. Uh, I'm looking through right now, I'm looking through the Allie Edwards Story Kit. This is the awesome story kit, and it was only a few days that I got this, so I remembered that there were a few cards in there that said not so awesome, and I wanted to use those for a specific story. This is the Stories by the Month kit for March, also from Allie Edwards, so I'm having a second look at that as well. Again, I got these just the other day, so I kind of remember what's in them, but I also want to just kind of, having just printed the photos, I want to just kind of remind myself of what I have to work with. Now here is the Paper Person kit. I'm, I'm very lucky to be working with three different kits uh, this time. I, I'm not sponsored or anything for any of these kits. These are kits that I pay for myself, uh, but I do feel fortunate to be able to subscribe to three kits at the same time. Not something I typically do, and it's not going to be a long-term plan for me, but for a couple months I'm going to be having three. So uh, just refamiliarizing myself with the paper person supplies. They are very birthday themed, so many of the 3x4 cards I won't be drawing from for this layout, but I will let you know what I'm drawing from as I use it. So a lot more supplies to work with than what I've been working with in previous Project Life spreads from recently anyways, and so because of that, um, I just wanted to take my time and familiarize myself. Sometimes it can be overwhelming having more uh, supplies to work with. So I'm starting by just placing all of my photos, which is usually the way that I go. So I've got some four by six photos. Those are the easiest to place because they can only go in those corners. And then I'm just working my way through the other things that I have. <laughs> I have this a piece of ephemera it's like a dollar bill printed up from a photo club that has my husband's face on it when he was the president of the photo club so uh we found that when we were cleaning up our basement and i just had to get it into project life because it's so silly he's got this big silly grin on his face it's becoming clear to me that i have more photos than i have space for on a typical two-page spread here so i'm going to be using an insert here this is a we are memory keepers insert it has three four by six pockets in it and it's half the width of a regular project life uh, 12 by 12 page so I took out most of the newsy type of things. Uh, I had a political cartoon, a Twitter post, and a few other things, and I'm putting those all aside to include in my insert. And I will reserve the, this kind of two-page spread for most of my personal family stories. Although a few personal stories will wind up on these insert at some point. I don't know that at this point. So as you can see, I'm just looking through the cards that I have and trying to find a card to go behind each of these three by four pockets, like it as a background, except for the ones that only have photos. Now, what I want to do with that photo of my daughter, um, I'm, I'm kind of demonstrating her swollen lips. She's got a, something happening that <laughs> she's extremely sensitive to cold and uh, her lips blew up like an insane amount. She's okay. Um, we were pretty worried about her. I took pictures and sent them to the doctor and uh, she seems to be okay. Her throat didn't close over or anything. It's just she's incredibly sensitive to the cold. It happens when she eats anything even just a little bit cold. So uh, yeah, we are. she has mono and so we're hoping that maybe it won't be permanent but the doctor seems to think it might be permanent. She might be just allergic to the cold now, which is not a good thing when you live in Canada. We're gonna have to see how we cope with that. <laughs> We're hoping that it's just not gonna be a thing. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I'm here trying to 
uh, for some reason, the this insert keeps pulling me, like my attention keeps getting pulled towards it, even though, as you can see, I'm ready to start scrapping the ins like the the main page. Uh, I just have this thought that I want I want to do something special with this Twitter uh, screen cap that I have, and I wanted it to look like the Ukrainian flag, um, but. I don't have the right cards for that. So I pulled out some yellow from my stash, some yellow cards, and I thought what I'd like to do is replace these two green strips with two yellow strips. So I just went over to my scraps and, uh, well, I went first I went to my yellow cardstock and I have this half sheet of yellow and I'm measuring it. It's about, I think, three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut this at uh, six inches and then three quarters of an inch. I, I cut two of them, but, and I, my first thought was maybe I could ink one of them to make it be a slightly different shade of, of yellow. And then I thought, ah, I don't want to take out my ink and do all that right now. Cause look, I've got this spread already to start with. I, I'm just doing this quickly. So instead I went into my yellow scraps. I keep my scraps in these 12 by 12. They're bigger than 12 by 12, maybe uh, 12 by 14 inch. Uh, big Ziploc bags. I've cut the Ziplocs off of them and it just stores my scraps by color. So as you can see, I have a slightly different shade of yellow on this scrap. So I'll cut it at three quarters of an inch as well and then also down to six inches. And now as you can see that it's very slightly different, but it's different enough that I feel okay about it. I'm going to cover up those green strips with these two pieces of yellow cardstock. And then there's a third shade of yellow already on the bottom of that card. So now that card is looking a little bit more reflective of a Ukrainian flag. And I'm putting all three of my, well, I guess both of my Ukrainian stories here, as well as that quote, which I thought kind of feels good to go with those cards as well, because it's the right color. And now I'm just tossing the rest of the things into the sleeves and I will uh, deal with that later. I'm going to do my main spread first. So I often like to start with the easiest thing. This photo didn't print up properly because I needed to change my print head, but I just left it. I reprinted all the other photos, but on this one, I thought I'll just leave it. It looks kind of cool over there on the side. Uh, cool. And then I'm also, uh, I'm taking these, these are die cuts that came from that awesome kit, that, which is a story kit from Allie Edwards. And these glittery words, uh, I, I thought would look good, especially on that photo of the winter scene that I'm working on right now. But I thought if I use one of them, I'd like to use multiples just to have this be a feature that will repeat on this page. So I've decided to uh, pull out a couple more of those words and then I just shifted some of the cards around a little bit so that there was some balance and those glittered words were spread around the page instead of all clumped together. Now this is a picture of my TV screen. My daughter who is homesick with mono for the next several weeks, the past three and maybe the next more weeks, uh, she is re-watching Lost which we watched with her when she was younger but she's older now and, and catching more of the of the story. So what I'm writing here is uh, Sawyer explains how he knows so much about Little House on the Prairie. And then in brackets, I'm putting lost just in case we forget. We'll never forget. But uh, someone else might need to know who this is. <laughs> uh, so this is a scene where uh, Sawyer was explaining how t uh, Kate was teasing him for, for referring to Little House on the Prairie. And he says, what? I had mono when I was a kid to explain why he had, uh, I guess, presumably spent a lot of time on the couch watching television and that Sophie could really relate to that and it, we thought it was pretty cool that as Sophie's home watching TV on the couch <laughs> with Mono that it just so happens that one of our favorite characters refers to having done the same. So that seemed project life worthy so we're gonna put this in the in the books. So I'm using these sassafras letter stickers. They're among my favorites. I really like the boldness that, that they bring to a Project Life spread. They're, they're just big enough to be big and stand out on, on a Project Life page, but not so big that they're unusable. So I'm using yellow for the word Sawyer and then blue for head mono too. And 
and I'm just kind of when I when I use my lettering in project life I tend to be more relaxed and I don't focus too much on spacing or having things be even or perfect really even in my 12 by 12 pages I don't really need things to be perfect but I'm certainly less likely to focus on perfection in a pocket page my rationale here is that when you look at a page you're, there's so much to take into if there are little flaws or imperfections every here and there it, it's not going to be a big deal I thought about just putting her lips on this page I just didn't have it in my heart to cut across the center of my daughter's face <laughs> Um, so I decided not to just have her lips be there. I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> it just didn't feel right. So I am going to do some journaling and I wanted to do journaling right on the photo, but where her hair is dark and, and I knew I had a, a fair bit to say, I thought I would journal on this piece of vellum. I'm using a nice dark marker. I'm using my Tombow Mono Twin Marker, which is an oil-based product and it's so it's permanent and it sticks to anything so my journaling here says since she got mono Sophie has been extremely sensitive to cold this is what she deals with after drinking a cold smoothie obviously she doesn't drink cold smoothies anymore that that was the first time that we gave her one since she got mono um, and now we're pretty careful about that we bring things up to room temperature before she eats them even if she walks on the floor I mean our house is not cold but if she walks on the floor and her bare feet just the hardwood will make her feet like become really inflamed and red and sore and hot and her hands if she doesn't if she just uses lukewarm water to wash her hands they get like really inflamed and sore so yeah I don't I don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> We're, we're just really hoping that it's not permanent. Uh, so here we go. This card says enjoying over and over and over again. And I have this little two by three photo of my daughter's fajita that she made when she made it for all of us. She cooked that day. It says lives fajitas. They were, they were not a HelloFresh meal. They were one of those kits that you get at the grocery store. And uh, she did not cook the steak part. Scott did. <laughs> because um, she's a vegetarian but yeah so so that's all that that one is nice and easy to be able to have such beautiful cards that you can just cut out a photo cut out a little caption and you're done so now this is a little joke and I thought to myself it's not really necessary that I have this joke in my project life but I took the time to screen cap it and print it it's not quite the right size like it's not I don't like the scale of it on this card so what I've done is I decided to reprint it at a different size I think I printed it at 1.5 by 1.5 whereas it was printed at I think 2 by 2 it's not quite square I think it might be 1.5 by 1.6 or something like that anyhow it's a weird size it's not the sizes that I usually print but it uh, it was worth it to just kind of you know reprint it to have it be the size that I wanted I'd like to put something in the center of this of this heart I really like this card as a filler card but I felt like it needed something interesting I have these plant rubber pieces they are from Allie Edwards from a number of years ago and I've had them in my stash for a long time they were one of those random grab bag rubber things that her site sometimes has they she just like puts grab bags of similar supplies together and uh, I bought them blindly and I've been hanging on to them because they're gorgeous and I just didn't have the right place to use them so found a place to use it so right now I'm just drawing lines on right directly on my photo I just use my sharpie pen for this uh, I find that it, it works fine on photos my writing here after I use my hot off the press template to do my journaling lines my writing says Nanny gave us this Bananagrams game and we've been playing it ever since Sophie got sick. And then I had some extra space, so I just wrote A, B, C, D, E, just for something to fill the space. And it shows Sophie's hands placing her words, it shows a few of my words, and the Bananagrams little bag, which is kind of fun because it's banana shaped and it's yellow. I knew I had a stamp set that was about game night. And I thought I might be able to use a stamp here. So I'm picking out this stamp set, by the way, is from In a Creative Bubble and Studio Calico. And I am just going to stamp Let's Play. 
and I'm conditioning these stamps just with my own fingers. I can't find my white eraser. I loaned it to my husband and forgot to get it. I specifically told him to give it back to me and I specifically know that he did give it back to me. I just don't know where I put it. So, <laughs> so anyhow, I lost it by lending it to him. I lost it. <laughs> uh, so that works out pretty good. I mean, obviously the big decorative L is hidden in the shadows there, but when you look at it in real life, you can actually see the L and it looks pretty nice. I like it. So that's about all I'm going to do with that card. These letters keep peeling up a little bit, as is the case with older letter stickers. That's one of the things about hoarding older supplies is sometimes the adhesive doesn't hold up over time. Um, they do stay put once you put them on a page, but they're just not as sticky as they once were. I have yet to have any of them pull off of a page. It's just that, you know, they're not, they're not stuck from, from, kind of like edge to edge. So I used that same hot off the press stencil to write some lines here. I just used pencil so that it's easy for me to, uh, did I use pencil? Yeah, I did, uh, to um, just write along the lines and I'll go back and underline. I won't, re I won't erase the lines. I'll just cover over them with marker. So again, I'm using my Sharpie pen for most of the journaling on this page. It says, as we roll with unexpected illness that made us move our trip to Cuba into April, we're also coping with an extremely tired little girl. This week she had a bit more energy, so Ty was able to come over for a brief visit. I worked mostly from home so I could get her anything she needed and keep her company sometimes. So I can't find my white eraser, so I used the bottom of my pencil to erase and that doesn't do a great job but it's okay in those tiny little spaces and then I'm just underlining with my same marker that I did the journaling with. So now I've planned to use this card here. I'm just going to cut off a chunk of it to cover up the less pretty parts of this of this photo. So the part with the tray handle. This is a tray that Sophie eats all of her meals from because she, we try to get her to sit down as much as possible. So we're having a lot of our meals at the coach. Also our dining room is a, like it's our, we're cleaning out our basement and we're putting everything in the dining room that needs to leave the house. So there's no eating that's going to be going on in that room anytime soon. So I'm just putting awesome here because this was a pretty awesome meal. It was a leftover waffle that I think Scott had made waffles this time and I'm just going to follow the line of the waffle and journal around it. I'm leaving so much space because I'm going to be uh, doing two lines. I'm expecting to do two lines here and the journaling says who loves waffles with peaches and whipped cream? We do. Moving on to the next card here. I'm using this moments card with the bands of color and I'm just going to trim down my photo a little bit. I'm trimming off all of the white border. I usually leave a white border and then I can always decide to take it off if I don't need it. And that's what I'm doing here. I just want a little edge of the pattern behind it to show on either on either edge. And I place that photo fairly low on the on the card and then I'm just going to put a caption here that says that time we used all the letters. So you know which game this is because it already features earlier in the page. And so this is we played several times and in one of those times we were able to actually use all the letters up. Usually we abandoned the game before we got to that point, but this time we saw it all the way to the end. This is a drink that Scott mixed me on St. Patrick's evening. We, he likes mixing cocktails as a bit of a hobby. And so uh, he always mixes two, one that's half strength for me and one that's regular strength for him. This is called a Bright and Stormy. And uh, I'm gonna use these mint green letter stickers because there's so much mint green on this page that I thought that that would pick up quite well. When I printed up this photo, I, I specifically printed it with the glass sitting high in the pa on, the, on the photo. I cropped it this way so that I could use this little bit of table to spell out the, the, the name of the drink. 
So it's called A Bright and Stormy, which is a take off of a, another drink, a more classic drink called A Dark and Stormy. Dark and Stormy is made with dark rum, and A Bright and Stormy is made with light rum, um, which I wouldn't know because I can't even taste any rum in my version of it. <laughs> I don't like the taste of rum, so I wouldn't have liked it. <laughs> But for me, it's basically a whole bunch of lemon juice and some bitters floating on the top. It was delicious. Tiny bit of, of rum in there, he tells me. I couldn't taste it, which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, so now I used up my gift card. One of Well, I used up both of them, but I'm only going to use one of them on my page here. It's watercolory and has the greens and some yellows and stuff. So I thought it fit well, so I just trashed the other one. It says, uh, spending my gift cards on planner supplies. Happy belated V-Day to me. And now I'm going to journal right in this little space on this photo. It says, it was 14 degrees today, so we sat outside and blew bubbles that Jen gave her this week. Now underline those, and then I'm just going to reach for my roller date stamp. I thought about using this one that came with the Kelly Perky, or the, I mean the paper person kit. I like that it says Thursday on there. It was Thursday, but instead I'm going to pull out my roller date stamp and stamp out March 17th. There's only a tiny little space that this is going to be visible, so I'm actually stamping so that the year falls off of the edge. I didn't ink the year so that all I'm seeing there is March 17th and then those little patterns that came before it. Now on this picture of Sophie and Ty, I'm just going to use mono Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive just to glue this down, which is what I've been using on all of them. Just go very light with that because it's you don't want any kind of oozing out of the edges. It's a very strong glue so you don't need very much. And now I'm moving on to this photo of me. It's it's me taking a picture in my mirror of, but it's not actually a picture of me. It's a picture of my desk. Now I had some leftovers lab labels here that I'm trying to use, and I found this pink one, but I really wanted to pair it with a with a circle. And I found this green circle, which really fits well with my color scheme here. Lots of green on these pages. Uh, St. Patrick's Day does fall on this week, so. And obviously a lot of the cards in the Kelly Perky kit, I mean the paper person kit, uh, have lots of green in them. Now I just used that same roller date stamp to say March 15th this time. And my journaling here says I rarely wear much makeup so I made my desk into a journaling desk. I put some markers and uh, some journals and a planner up there to just kind of have something to do before I go to bed. Now here's that hilarious dollar, ten dollar gift card thing that <laughs> I found in the basement. And my writing here just says, found when cleaning the basement. I put a little arrow to it. His smile is hilarious. I don't know how widely dispersed these ten dollar gift cards were, but uh, I'm hoping that they're everywhere. I'm hoping that lots of people have these. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, so here I am. We're kind of coming to the end of my first session. I, I scrapped this whole page over two different sessions. And uh, I just want to, before I call, take a break, I want to figure out if I can use some of these chipboard pieces. So I'm going to put this purple uh, ready for a refresh because I refreshed my makeup table into a, a desk. And then this one says March Memories, and I'll use my tiny attacher in the same way, just attaching vertical staples there to both of those. And at this point, I'm thinking I will probably do a little bit more embellishing. So I'm just going to, I'm having a look at what stamps I have on hand here, if I might want to use some of those. I'm looking at my uh, my inserts and thinking about what I might want to do. Now I see this card uh, or this piece of chipboard and it says something about a special story or I can't remember exactly what it says. Uh, it didn't make it onto the page but it reminded me that I want to tell a special story here and I haven't made room for it yet so I'm thinking maybe I'll put that special story in my insert. 
This video is, as you may have noticed when you started it, it's a little bit longer than my scrapbooking 12 by 12 process uh, videos. Basically, um, it takes me longer to do these, and especially when there's an insert involved, uh, and I don't like speeding it up more than four times. I find that I just lose some of the process that way, and I, I don't know. Uh, if if it's too long for you, you can speed it up. I'm not sure how I sound when I'm speeded up. I might sound higher pitched, but uh, you know, you listen, you do you. Listen to as much of it or as whatever speed you you need to find it enjoyable. Uh, so now I'm looking at these mint word stickers, which I really really love. Love the color of them. It's such a soft, subtle color. And uh, looking on it, you know, there's a lot of springtime photos there or, or phrases that just don't fit with with my page but I did decide to put springtime on here because look this is what spring is like for us we've got snowfall <laughs> so uh, I, and I think that that adds a little something to that card where otherwise the word cool kind of gets lost I put St. Patrick's on the drink and I put uh, grateful above Michael's because I'm grateful for people having given me those birthday gifts way back in December. I think one of them is, maybe they both were from last year. I've one, At least one of them I know I've had for a long time. I put uh, Amazing and Sunny on the other one with the bubbles. And here I'm just going to glue down some of these letter stickers that I've mentioned that they are peeling. Because I store my mono upside down, it tends to, my mono multi, that's, <laughs> we're talking about mononucleosis here at the same time. Uh, it tends to always have a little bead coming out of it as soon as you take the lid off of it. So uh, if you keep yours that way, don't press it when you when you initially use it. So this one says why, and I just added a question mark because I think it's kind of like, why? Why did he choose that picture? <laughs> it's a photo club. Like, didn't he have a better picture of himself? <laughs> They're all photographers. Anyhow, <laughs> oh, here I am putting Amazing and Sunny. I must have put, oh yeah, it was documented today that I put on the picture of Sophie and Ty. There we go. Look at those bubbles. I was so proud of that photo because the bubbles turn out looking like bokeh. I'm going to send that to her aunt because her aunt gave her that. Now, oh, I love this, this little circle that says this. It almost looks like you're saying love this. And I thought, oh, maybe it'll look good pointing right to the fajita. So I think I'm going to put that there. And I forgot to actually glue it down. So you won't see me glue it down. But I will, when I go to put them in my pages, it will slide off. And I'll think, oh, yeah, I forgot to glue that. So I used Tombow Mono Multi to glue it down as I put it into the pocket. So now I feel like I'm pretty much done with those pages. I think I might come back to them. I can't remember. But... In the meantime, I have an insert to do. So again, this is a We Are Memory Keepers 6x12 inch with three 6x4 pockets. And so although it looks like a side-by-side -side spread, this is a double-sided half spread here. So the things on the left will be on the front page of this page protector and the things on the right will be on the other side. I'm going to focus mostly on the left side for now because I have more of a sense of what I want to do with that, whereas the others are just kind of like random things that I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do. Also, I'm missing a story. So there's a, a story that I've sort of forgotten about that I mentioned. I have a good story to tell. Um, so I'm just playing around with how I'm going to want to tell some of these stories. My first thought was that I would do journaling on those strips of yellow paper that I glued to like as bands on that one with the Twitter screen screen cap. That card says finding the beauty in the difficulty of it all or something like that. And oh, that goes so much with the story that I want to tell. But I really want to stick with that uh, flag like reflection. Uh, so I'm not going to use that card, although it's very pretty and it says the right thing. So I'm going to start with this center card first. I started with it and the thing that I said, because I, I do capture this in real time and, and share it with my patrons, what I was saying is, let's start with this one. It'll be easy. I'll just knock this one out of the park and then I'll work on the other two. But <laughs> this one took a while. <laughs> 
So I'm starting with this screen cap of a newspaper article uh, that I read on Apple News on my phone. And it's from the New York Times. It says, hate for Putin's Russia consumes Ukraine. And it's actually a quote from therapists. The story was about how therapists in Ukraine are having to help people deal with their anger and that that's a normal reaction and that it's important to validate their anger. So what the quotes say is anger and hate in this situation is a normal reaction and important to validate. And then the next quote says, but it's important to channel it into something useful, dot, 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 such as making incendiary bombs out of empty bottles. And so that just kind of struck me as a bit of dark humor to lighten a dark day. Um, because, yeah, I give advice that's very similar to that up until the dot, 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 but I've never said uh, that people should make bombs as part of what, of the advice that I give. Uh, and nor will I ever start to give that advice. So I just thought that it was, uh, you know, like a funny sort of joke, but sort of not. It's one of those things. It's dark humor, right? It's funny, but it's also kind of really not funny at the same time. Uh, so... I am using these adorable little yellow stickers. They are from Studio Calico, I believe. And I really love this font. Really love them. They're very hard to work with, as you can see, because they're so tiny, but they're so worthwhile because when I spell out Ukraine, it's gonna look great. And I just grabbed any old little thing I had on hand to help me place these. I don't like using tweezers. I don't find them all that helpful. I was going to cut down this J and then I noticed that there are some eyes after all. I thought I had used up all the eyes, but I didn't. I had one. I, there were actually several on there. I just wasn't seeing them. So I am going to struggle with getting the dot from this eye and then I will move on and place the rest of these leather stickers. And what I'm trying to do here is I am basically working from the bottom up. I want to say my title here is going to say, meanwhile, therapists in Ukraine are saying stuff like this, <laughs> which is, you know, so different than in our world where I say, get a heavy bag, <laughs> uh, join some sports. <clears throat> So we've got Ukraine, and that's looking great. I'm wishing it was a little bit more centered, but it doesn't matter because I, it's going to be the last word in a phrase that's going to have messy uh, kind of spacing and maybe a bit of a bouncing line as well. So I am just going to have to look through my stickers because I'd really love for the whole this whole left side of this insert to be red, or not red, blue and yellow. I want it to be blue and yellow. So I'm looking for some blue words and I want it to kind of go back and forth as I'm showing it with my hands. It'll go from mean, I'm thinking mean while therapists in, and then Ukraine will be over here. So it'll kind of like go back and forth. So I grabbed my small letter stickers. I do have a stack of small letter stickers that I just keep here with my project life supplies. And I looked through those and didn't see any blue at all. So some turquoise and teal and stuff, but no blue. And so I'm just going through my larger small letter stash. It's larger in that it's more of them, but they're my small letters for subtitles and that sort of thing. And of course they become titles on Project Life because everything is scaled down. So I'm picking out anything that has blue. They're not the right shades of blue. I actually don't have a whole lot of blue supplies, whether we're talking inks or letter stickers or regular stickers, because I'm not a huge blue fan. And uh, I've only recently started using blue on layouts a little bit more. And so this is exactly the right color. I just wasn't sure if I'd have all the right letters and I am missing an E, but there are numbers in this, so I can use a backwards three for an E. And so that's what I'm doing. I saw those stickers, which I thought were the same as the ones I used for Ukraine, but they're not. They're a different font. So let's put those back and we're going to stick with these Kelly Perky tile letter stickers. And I'm thinking I'm going to put mean and while as separate words, like with a hyphen. But I'm going to work my way backwards from Ukraine. So I'm going to say in right there. 
so far so good. And now I'm going to spell out therapists, which is a pretty long word to fit in this space. Do you think it's going to fit? I wasn't too sure. There's my backwards three that I'm using as an E. It'll do in a pinch. It's becoming clear that I'm going to run out of space. So let's scooch these over. And I'm also going to overlap some of them so that more letter stickers can fit in the same space. And it's I'm not lining them up perfectly. So some of them are falling a, are like a little high and some of them are a little low and that's okay. I just don't want it to be back and forth like high and then low and then high and then low because that's too much of a pattern. I want it to look more random. That last S, I wanted just a sliver of white showing around the edge of it. So I didn't want it to be overlapping with the blue on that photo. It does overlap with the edge of the photo, but it's the white part, so it's okay. I wanted some separation between the word therapists and then the blue that is on that photo. Now it's becoming clear to me that I don't actually have to separate the word meanwhile. I counted out the, the letters compared to the letters in the word therapists. And if therapists fit, then meanwhile will fit. So I'm going to spell that out right here. I'm overlapping some of the letters so that it's not too different than therapist. So if meanwhile was all spread out and therapist is almost all overlapped, that would look weird. So some of these are overlapped and some of them are spaced out. So that just doesn't look too different. So you know, that's okay, but I need a few things. I need an arrow. I want an arrow to point to, you know, meanwhile therapist in the UK and I want your mind to say, you know, like are saying things like this. So I went into my chipboard arrows. I keep them in a little case here, a little four by six case. And uh, I found this one. It was a circular one, but I just cut it down so that it would be pointing in the right place. It's got a little bit of blue on it. So I like that some blue and also a turquoise color as well. But I like how it kind of casually curves around and points to the phrases like the quotes I wish I had a proper like the right size heart I wish that that heart was just one scale down from that so I'm going to dig around these are my fabric embellishments felts and those sorts of things oh, that's okay it's kind of celebratory I don't know it looks like a bit of a bow tie so I went into my bows I have a whole a whole bin full of bows but again bows feel a little bit too celebratory to put on a card that's about war so I thought I would use, I remembered that I had some stash in the back of my drawer uh, and th these wool circles from Amy Tangerine were the right color. And I thought, well, let's use those. They're not too celebratory, but they're going to fill that space. I needed something to fill up that space. I had a moment of thinking maybe these could look like sunflowers because that would be appropriate. Uh... No, they don't really look like sunflowers. <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch. And uh, so I'm just kind of sitting there thinking, Do, is that what I want? I put them on top so I could decide, is that the look that I'm going for? Not really. Then I thought maybe if I used alcohol markers or something to color the centers of these marker of these little cabochons, maybe it would look a little bit more like a sunflower. So I pulled out my alcohol marker and tried that but it still just looks like a daisy um yeah now it looks like a daisy with shading on the inside of it which is very nice but it's not a sunflower and they were too close together and too decorative and so i decided to go with these wool dots basically so that's fine i i like that card we'll we'll keep it that way and now I've decided to cut off the little bottom of the Twitter screen cap, which has all those icons at the bottom of it. I, I usually include those, but I would rather have a bit of the uh, design showing on the bottom of this. So that's why I trimmed it down just to make it a little bit shorter. And now I am using those strips of cardstock as my journaling and I'm writing on the yellow ones because my writing will show up better on them. Here's what I'm saying. And I probably am not going to pronounce this woman's name properly, but reading Yaroslava's morning war coffee tweets has become part of my morning routine. 
I love to see not only her perspective, but the heartwarming greetings and photos from around the world. It reestablishes some faith in humanity. I have to say it's like one of the most comforting parts of my day is waking up and just checking out her Twitter feed. I try to not go on Twitter other than to just check out hers. Uh, and what I really love is that she, like just the way her life goes on, even though there's a war happening all around her, she works and has meetings and um, talks about life and takes pictures of her coffee and outside of her window. And what I really, really love is all of the comments. There's just people from all over the world who share their um, like view outside their window or pictures of their coffee cups or just greetings or the pictures of their dogs or cats. And it's just, it feels like so many different walks of life, so many different parts of the world. You can see like the desert and the jungle and the like all, all sorts of different places, beautiful, beautiful places, plain places. Uh, and it just, I love it. Uh, so now I'm thinking about how this is going to sit as, as an insert here. And I, I kind of like the idea of this side of the insert being obviously different from the pages around it in that it has this bold blue and yellow color scheme that isn't on the rest of the page. Although there is yellow and there is blue on the rest of the page. I, I like that this kind of marks itself as different. So now I'm going to start working on the back side of this and it's not going to be as different as the front side. And I also can't decide what is going to go on these pages. And I feel kind of like I've got a little bit too much of the Ukraine stuff in here and the Ukraine news. Uh, so I am going to kind of rework this. I also have another story that I need to tell that I've been sort of forgetting and neglecting. So let's see what we're going to do here. This is going to go in a couple of different directions before I find uh, a place that's going to actually work. So I pulled out this, a story of awesomeness. This is from the Allie Edwards stories kit, that awesome one. And this is that story that I want to tell that that green tag in chipboard was reminding me of. It turns out, I know I'm not going to have room for it. So I'm just going to put it back. It served its purpose, which was to remind me to tell that story. Uh, but it's actually not going to go on the page. I feel like if I don't put the year of the tiger here in March, it's, I feel like if you wait too long, it's kind of irrelevant. Like, of course it's relevant. It's the year of the tiger for the whole year. Uh, but I, I think it, I feel like I want it to go early in the year. So I'm going to trim this down on all the sides because I want the design in the center to stay centered. And I'm going to mat it on this piece of this other card. What that does is it gives me separation because the, the this little chart that's going right beside it is not part of that. Like these are two different stories, but it's going into a four by six pocket. So it's going to look like they might be the same story. So I want them to be matted on different cards so that it's clear that these two things don't go together. Or, you know, as clear as it can be. I mean, once you look at it, it's clear that they're not about the same thing, but I just want to kind of ease that storytelling. I'm going to trim this card down so that there's just a little sliver of the craft color all the way around it. And this is going to be for the opposite reason. So now I want it to be clear that this top card, that both of those are from the same story. So I've got that picture of the news story of the, the end of the world as we know it from the REM song. And I'm, my journaling is going to be on that March card. And so I'm just showing here that uh, I'm using the same concept of using matting in two opposite ways. So here I'm using matting to pull two potentially discrepant cards together. And then in the bottom, I'm using matting to separate two cards. So let's go ahead. We're going to start by matting that mar March card and then we'll put the news story. Uh, it's like just a screen cap. I forget where I found it somewhere on the internet. And I thought, hey, I remember that song. <laughs> um, and here my journaling is going to be about just kind of like my generation and which is Gen X. I was, I was born in 72. So a lot of people my age kind of grew up with a lot of anxiety about nuclear war and World War III. So my journaling says my generation in brackets Gen X grew up fearing nuclear war and WW3. So the current news really rattles me, in brackets and probably others, in a unique way. 
I didn't realize somewhere along the way I had stopped fearing this as much. So I did pre-journal here, which is not something I often do, but I just wanted to make sure that I had my thoughts straight and that there would be room for everything that I wanted to say on the card. And so I partially pre-journaled. So I have some of that. And then the last sentence, I, I purposely made everything smaller when I transferred it over so that I'd have more room to say one more thing. And my one more thing was that part about how I didn't really realize that somewhere along the way I stopped fearing this as much. I mean, obviously, it's you know, nobody wants these things to happen, and it is a fear for many, many people. But for a while, it sort of like went dormant or something, and now it's reawakened. <laughs> it's not something I'm terribly, terribly worried about, but it's just, you know, like you get this almost physical uh, gut like reaction in your stomach when you think about it. Oh yeah, so I left this footage in. This was a break I usually cut these out, but during this break, I uh, leave the camera rolling and I just wanted to show that here's how I went about planning out my other journaling because I pre-journaled this too. So I took a break and I wanted to kind of gather my thoughts. So I just kind of put the camera on a break and uh, went and wrote this. So this is a story that's my husband knows more of the details than I do, so my plan was to go find him and ask him the details and write this out, but it turns out he was running, and I could, so I couldn't ask him, and I didn't want to wait. The camera was still rolling on a break, and I just wanted to get it done, so I just did my own best, and it turns out that it's good that I didn't have as many details because I think that the story gets told better without trying to squeeze in some of those details, like exactly who's who or whose relative was what. I just said a relative in the place. Uh, so I, I think that it, it turned out for the better. Although I do like the idea of having someone else's voice or someone else's input on a story. So if he was here, I would have taken his input and maybe this card would have had more of his voice on it. But it didn't happen for this one. It'll probably happen for some other story at some point. There are there are other people's voices every here and there in my pages. So uh, this is just one opportunity where that didn't happen. I'll read you the card. It's quite a long one. It says, uh, Sylvia is the Italian student who was unable to stay with us due to COVID-19. She ended up going to stay with in, in BC with a family with a Ukrainian background. This family has had to send relatives to Poland to get other family members who were fleeing the war. They needed a safe place in Europe to stay for a while, and because of their connection to Sylvia, they were able to stay with her family. As sad as we have been that we never had the chance to have Sylvia as our student, we are comforted to think perhaps it was meant to be this way. Yeah. Yeah. We have connected with this family in Italy in a way that we have not connected with other international students that we've had. We've had several and we have connected quite strongly with many of their families, uh, but usually we that connection comes after we had them live with us and get to know them. But for this student, I, I don't know if it was because we were bonding during the pan, like the, the pandemic was just kind of rolling out and starting to happen. Uh, and we all were so, you know, hoping that they, she would be able to come and then so devastated when she couldn't. And then she had to make the, the decision of if she would go someplace else or wait for us. And we told her to just go, go to another place so that she can get her experience. Um, it was very gut wrenching and we FaceTimed with her family and we've sent gifts back and forth. And I don't know, man, we just feel so close to this family. And we've always felt this kind of like that was something that should have happened that didn't happen. Um, but now that it kind of played out this way, it's a little bit easier to say, well, you know, this family gets the help that it needs because we didn't get to meet Sylvia, so maybe that's okay. We'll meet her sometime. We're going to make it happen. So I am just underlining here. <laughs> that story chokes me up a little bit. Gee. So yeah, I had to just, I had to change my mind about my underlining. I was um, underlining in a 0.05 pen, which was just too fine. It was not making much impact. It didn't look much different than the pencil line. So I went back to a 0.01, which is better. It was an 005. 
Uh, so this is a 0.01, which is a little bit thicker, but still not as thick as the journaling. Basically, this journaling is so dense, like there's so much on the page, I didn't want heavy lines here. It would kind of make it too weighty. Weighty. So before I put these in the pockets, I'm just going to use my tape runner to glue these two to the card that goes behind it so that they stay put in the page protector. And believe it or not, those bulky little wool circles actually fit. I didn't know if they would, but they did. So let's just pull these pages over. There we go. And this is how it all looks. So yeah, that's how it'll look when it's all in the album. I will take some pictures of it before I put it in the album so that you won't get any glare. So keep Keep an eye out for those photos. They're coming. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just flipping back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but here's how it looks. I really love the color scheme. This one looks more pulled together than many of my, of my pages. I don't mind them not being pulled together. And believe it or not, those letter stickers did not move when I put them in the pocket. I also glued that this down, that heart down before I put it in the pocket. But uh, yeah, I, I like how this one turned out. It's the mint green that I think really does it, right? Like it really pulls it all together. Oh, there's a hair on that one. It's not in the pocket. I'm looking at it right now and it, the hair isn't there. Yeah, so thank you so much to these people. These are my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Tiaras. These people help me keep on making the videos that I make by supporting me over there. And in return, they get access to real-time process videos as well as some behind the scenes videos and uh, also they get to see my process videos ad free for a little bit they get early access so thank you to them and thank you to you for watching this far take care and have a really great scrappy week